Since the uh, beginning of the outbreak of the coronavirus, uh, we here in San Francisco have done everything we can starting back in January to prepare. In fact, we operated immediately our emergency operations center in order to maintain uh, clear information from uh, around the country and around the world to understand what was happening and to try and make sure that we were providing the public uh, with the best information that we had to be fully transparent, but also using the data and the science to ensure uh, that what was being communicated was entirely accurate. Uh, and as a result of that work since January, uh, in February, just uh, February 25th, we uh, declared a public uh, state of emergency here in San Francisco uh, so that we can further prepare uh, for the possible arrival of the coronavirus here in San Francisco. And as I said, through this process, it has been all about uh, protecting public health uh, and making sure that we were doing everything we can uh, to communicate accurate information with what we know sometimes uh, a lot of information gets out there. It's not entirely true, but it's important that everything that we know is communicated directly to the public so that we have accurate information every step of the way. Um, today, uh, we are announcing the first two cases of coronavirus in our city. Uh, they've been detected here in San Francisco, and these individuals are contained. And I will let Dr. Uh, Colfax talk a little bit more about the details. Uh, and I want to be clear that we have been planning this for weeks. And so we are prepared as a city. We want people to continue to do exactly what we've asked people to do, and that is make sure that you're washing your hands and that you're doing the, the things that are going to help uh, to protect yourselves um, in the midst of what we know um, could continue to be a virus uh, that spreads. And so at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Grant Colfax uh, to come up and provide uh, the details of the two cases uh, that were just diagnosed. Good morning. I'm Grant Colfax, Director of Health, and thank you, Mayor. The San Francisco Department of Health lab conducted COVID-19 tests for two patients and have recently found that two patients are infected. These results were reported to me this morning. The two patients are unrelated and both are being cared for at se separate hospitals in San Francisco. The patients do not have a history of travel to a location with confirmed COVID-19 cases and have no known contact with a person with a confirmed COVID-19 case. These cases are like similar cases we are seeing in the, in the region. They are indicative of community transmission of COVID-19. The patients are in fair and serious condition and are being treated in isolation at the two different San Francisco hospitals. All appropriate precautions for the patient, visitors, and hospital staff are being taken. The health department has informed the patient's families this morning and is investigating the patient's history and contacts to protect the health of individuals and to help slow the spread of the virus in the community. Patient number one is a man in his 90s and he is hospitalized in serious condition. The patient has underlying health conditions. He was tested by the DPH lab and the results were given to me this morning. Patient number two is a woman in her 40s and she is hospitalized in fair condition. Again, her results were provided to me this morning. To protect privacy, San Francisco will not be releasing further patient information or de identifying the hospitals in which the patients are being treated. Unfortunately, these cases of COVID-19 in San Francisco residents do not come as a surprise. Given the virus has been detected in the Bay Area, California, and increasingly across the country, San Francisco has been preparing for the appearance of COVID-19 in the community for many weeks. Last week, the city declared a local emergency to boost our preparedness and anticipation of just the situation. The people who are sick 
are getting the best care provided by our outstanding health care professionals. We do not know at this point how they were exposed to the virus, which again suggests it is spreading in the community. We expected that to happen, we anticipated that, and are further invest investigating the circumstances of these patients' exposure. Let me be very clear. This virus does not discriminate. Stigma and discrimination is unacceptable in this time when we need to come together as a community to, tr to protect public health. All of us need to do our part. Do the basic things. Wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. Cheap soap is just as good as expensive soap. If you do not have availability of a sink or soap, use hand sanitizer. Please do not come to work or go to school if you are sick. Stay at home and if necessary, contact your health care provider. Ensure that when you greet people, you can do an elbow bump. Do not shake hands at this time. That is public health data that shows that that reduces the risk of transmission. I also want to stress that due to the fact that we started local testing in San Francisco on Monday at our public health lab, we are testing more people. We now have availability of test kits to test those at most risk for disease. There is no on-demand testing in San Francisco at this time, and people who have questions about their symptoms and whether they should be potentially tested should consult with their health care provider. Additional information from the health department is available on our website at sfdph, that's sfdph.org. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Colfax, and I also want to thank the members of the Board of Supervisors who are joining us here today as well as other department heads. And I want to also reiterate uh, that this disease does not discriminate against anyone. And the fact is there's been a lot of xenophobia against folks who are part of our Asian community. And we know that when there is a stigma attached to a particular group of people, especially around such an important public health issue, then the less, it's less likely that people will be willing to come forward, which means that the health outcomes we need to address this virus may not occur. So it is up to us to come together as a community and to know that at this point, based on what we know, based on the data, based on the information that we're providing, that we need to make sure that everyone feels safe, that everyone feels that they can talk to their health care providers and that we're not discriminating against any particular race in our community. And with that, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the uh, cruise ship, which uh, you heard the announcement yesterday that a cruise ship it was scheduled to return to San Francisco that contained uh, individuals with flu-like symptoms. We are work working closely with the Coast Guard, with the Center for Disease Control, and with the state uh, to uh, address this issue. We know it's important that we take precautionary steps before any consideration occurs to determine where this cruise ship will land. And I want to be clear uh, with the people of San Francisco that we're doing everything we can to work with the state and the federal partners per per to prepare if it does come to San Francisco. But there are certain criteria that must be met before that occurs. So at this time, I want to ask the director of the Department of Emergency Management, Mary Ellen Carroll, to talk more specifically about what that entails. Thank you, Mayor Breed. Good morning. This is where we currently stand regarding the Princess cruise ship that was scheduled to return to San Francisco this week. At this time, the CDC, the California State Health Department, and the Governor's Office of Emergency Services with the U.S. Coast Guard are working to determine if COVID-19 is present on the ship. 
There are 2,383 passengers on board the ship and 1,100 crew members. Of that, a total of 35 have shown flu-like symptoms during the course of this 15-day cruise. Many of those people have recovered and are no longer showing flu-like symptoms. Testing protocols are being put into place on the ship for those passengers and crew that have shown flu-like symptoms or may have been exposed to the virus, and that is happening today. Once we have results from the tests, the CDC and the state will determine the most appropriate location for the ship to berth, and that will, the location needs to provide for the safety of the surrounding community as well as the passengers and crew. The CDC and the state are fully engaged in determining a location that can most appropriately address the health of those passengers that may have COVID-19 and the safety of those passengers not impacted as well as the surrounding community. The CDC and the state are considering a number of locations, including San Francisco. However, where the ship will dock will be dependent on if the location can enact the proper CDC, state, and local protocols and has the infrastructure to protect the entire community. Our main concern is whether we can ensure those passengers that may be infected receive the care that is needed, those passengers not impacted can safely travel home, and the health and safety of our local community. This is an evolving situation that requires the, fe the federal government, the state of California, and San Francisco to ensure all the best practices and protocols are in place to accept any cruise ship that may require COVID-19 mitigation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mary Ellen. Um, and I just want to say that San Francisco is embarking on territory that is not unfamiliar to us. You all know that we have some of the most incredible public health experts anywhere in the world right here in our city. We've dealt with challenges over the years, whether it was the H HIV crisis or SARS or H1N1, and we got through those events because we came together as a city, because we put forward best practices and because we continue to make sure that we communicate clearly on things that the public can do in order to make sure that we protect public health. Ultimately, that is our goal. And we will continue to do everything we can to make sure that as soon as we have information available, as soon as we have accurate information available, we provide that information and that is what we are doing here today.